What's going on, guys? Here we are, another week at the Home Theater Hobbyist, and this week we're talking about Fubo TV. So let's get to it. As many of you know, a few months ago I cut the cable at my house, which means I no longer have cable TV service from my local cable provider. And in doing so, I have tried out many, many streaming services, including Hulu, Sling, PlayStation View, DirecTV Now, and many others. If you want to check out those reviews, you can look for a link in the description below. Now I'm on to the next one. That is Fubo TV, F-U-B-O TV. It is a sports media streaming service with a live TV component. And what I mean by that is it has, it streams a lot of sports. And so for the sports fans out there, you gotta try it out, right? So I decided to try it out. So let me give you a little bit of background on Fubo TV. Plans start at $44.99 for 70 plus channels. You pay extra for packages such as Cycling, Adventure Plus, Showtime, and various language support, including Portuguese and Spanish. Features include a cloud DVR that has 30 hours of storage, a 72 hour look back feature, so if you forget to hit record, you can replay nearly any game, show, or movie that aired in the last three days. It has a seven day free trial, and it is available on Amazon Fire TV, Android, Android TV, Apple TV, Chromecast, and Roku. So basically you can find it anywhere. You can watch up to two streams at a time with a third stream for an additional $5.99 per month. The service gives you the ability to pause, play, rewind, and fast forward 15 seconds if that particular show slash network allows it, especially during commercials. The channel lineup includes many popular sports networks, including Fox Sports, Fox Sports One, the Big Ten Network, NBA TV, NFL TV, the Pac-12 Network, NBC Sports Networks, and other major sports networks. One big downside of the service is it does not include ESPN or any of the ESPN family of networks, including ESPN2, ESPNU, ESPN Classic, the ACC Network. The service does have a pretty extensive on-demand library for movies and TV shows. So let's talk about my experience. I signed up for the app through the website where I went in, I logged in, I gave them my information, picked a package, and I started the seven day free trial. Sign up was very easy and simple. I didn't have any issues there. Then I downloaded the app on my Roku streaming media device and also on my Amazon Fire TV. That occurred really, really quickly, didn't have any issues, and I launched the app. The app launches really quickly within a few seconds, and once it launches, it gives you a menu of all the sports that are playing live. If you use the down arrow on your remote, if you have an Amazon Fire TV or a Roku TV, you can see other sports such as soccer, rugby, MMA, and whatever else they have there. If you use the up arrow, the up arrow takes you to all the other menu options. That includes things like channels, networks, the guide, everything like that. Streaming quality was actually pretty good during my time with the service. I had a few times where it buffered or the content had to reload, but that was not a constant occurrence. It only happened a few times. Video quality was also very good. I was getting at least 720p, probably 1080p most of the time. There was a few times where I saw the video quality dip just a little bit as it was having issues with buffering maybe or something like that, but for the most part, video quality was rock solid. Audio quality was also very good. I didn't have any lip sync issues where the video and audio got out of sync. It continued to play. So from that standpoint, the performance was really, really good. One of the things I did notice was I feel like the interface could be a little better for this service. And what I mean is when you're watching content, watching live TV, let's say, the up, down, left, right arrows don't do anything on a Roku remote or the Amazon remote. You get nothing. Whereas with other services, when you're watching live content, if you press the down arrow or the up arrow, it'll at least show you what's on while the content is still playing. With this, you had to use the back button, get out of the show, and then you could find something else. So I thought that could use a little work, a little cleanup. Fubo TV brands itself as the media streaming service for those who enjoy sports. And it has a lot of sports networks, which is good. It also has other networks such as news from Fox News, I think it has MSNBC, CNBC. It also has the Cooking Channel, HGTV, and other channels like that. So it does have a pretty good selection of channels. Now, the thing that I think is uh, takes away from it a little bit is the lack of ESPN and the ESPN family of networks. 
Right now we have the Stanley Cup Finals playing and so I'm able to watch that on the service, but I cannot watch the NBA Finals because the NBA Finals are on ESPN. So I'm still using Hulu to watch that particular service. I couldn't watch some of the NBA playoffs because they were on TNT, which was also not on the service. It does have NBA TV, so I'm able to watch the replays and things like that, but I am missing the game live. So for me, this is not necessarily the best streaming service, especially for sports nuts here in the US because it's missing ESPN. But if you have sports that you watch and they don't air on ESPN, or you can get them on Fox Sports 1 or something like that, then this is actually a pretty good service to look into. The streaming quality is good, the video quality is good, the audio quality is good, and the sign-up process is easy. But it is missing ESPN, like I said. So overall, I think it's a good service with that one pretty big miss, but you'll have to decide for yourself if you want it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, consider supporting us any way you can, and we'll talk to you next time.